we seek his aid and we ask for his forgiveness. Dear students, I would like to welcome you in lecture number 10. And today we will talk about discourse analysis. The meaning of discourse is spoken or written English. But we will come in more details to know about discourse analysis. And here we will talk about the meaning of discourse analysis and then about cohesion. What is cohesion? What is the meaning of cohesion? I'll present also uh, one example to understand what is cohesion. And then after that we will move to coherence. Again the meaning of coherence. And after that we will come to know about speech events. What are the things and factors uh, which affect the speech or spoken English? Uh, then after that, we will talk about a co um, uh, a cooperative principle, and there are four uh, principles here. Then, hedges, what is the meaning of hedges, and some examples of hedges. Implicatures also is included in discourse analysis. And then, background knowledge of a person, either who listen or hear uh, to the conversation or to the sentence. And then after that, we will come to the last point of discourse analysis, the um, uh, difference between uh, schemas or schemata, sometimes they call it as schemata, and scripts. Let us start with discourse analysis. Now, when we ask how we make sense of what we read, when we read something, we make sense, we understand something, and how... Uh, we can organize well-constructed texts as opposed to those that are jumbled or incoherent. And how we understand speakers who communicate more than they say. And how we successfully take part in that complex activity called conversation. We are uh, undertaking what is known as discourse, discourse analysis. Now, this is the meaning here of discourse analysis, is uh, to know what we or how we make sense of what we speak or what we read, and also to be organized and well-constructed or to present a well-constructed uh, text, and finally to understand the speakers who um, uh, participate in communication more than what they say and successfully take part in a complex activity called uh, conversation. So this is the meaning of uh, discourse. Uh, this point is a little bit complicated because when I talk about cohesion and coherence, these two points are connected. And uh, many students are uh, confused when I say cohesion and coherence. Now I'll talk about these two separately with some examples. Now, cohesion describes the way in which a text is tied together by linguistic devices or linguistic tools. Such as, for example, when I say and, in addition to, therefore, moreover, we can see that the text is connected by using ling linguistic devices or tools. Now, a text has uh, this is the meaning of, it is not coming here, sorry, I'll go back. Now, this is the meaning of cohesion. Cohesion is the unity of a text or a written text or a segment of a spoken discourse that stems from links among its surface elements. Now, as when words or as when words in one sentence are repeated in another, and especially from fact that some words or phrases depend on their interpretation upon immaterial or following text, as in the sequence. Now, I'm not sure whether this is clear or not. Okay, now it's clear. Now, see this example. My father once bought a car, whatever, a Lincoln convertible. He did it by saving money, being by could, or he could. That car would be worth a fortune nowadays, however, and so on. Now, if you look to uh, these sentences, we will find these sentences are tied together 
by linguistic devices or forms. Now here we have, first, first of all, we have the pronoun he, which refers to my father. And again, that car refers to a Lincoln convertible. It is the name of a car. Now, these sentences are connected by using the pronouns, proper pronouns, proper nouns, and also by using a linguistic devices or tools, uh, uh, coordinators, subordinators like however, moreover, and so on. Now, uh, coherence is the key of the concept. Now, everything fitting together, not to put something together, everything is fitting together well. It's not something that exists in words or structure, but some something that exists in people. It is people who make sense of what they read and hear. Now, to make it more clear, see this definition here of the coherence. It is a unity of a written text or segment of a spoken discourse that seems from links among its underlying ideas and from the logical organization of a text or a paragraph and also a logical development of its thematic content. Now, the same example. My father bought a Lincoln car. The car driven by police was red. Now, that color doesn't suit her. She consists of three letters, however, and till the end. Now, by going back to the previous example, we find that these ideas or the development of ideas in this text is well organized and well developed in a logical way. First, I talk about my father that he had a, a car and then the way he bought the car and then after that the condition of the car and whether it's uh, worth or not to my father or nowadays and then after that so this is uh, a logical development a logical organization of the text so this is called as coherence but when I use the proper noun and the proper pronoun which refers to the noun using again the car or that car which is referred to something else using subordinators or subconjunctions and these also uh, connects and make um, uh, the, uh, the sentences tied together well so this is the difference between cohesion and coherence speech events now when we speak or when we hear people speak definitely that uh, there are some factors which affect the way we speak the tone we speak and the meaning the, s the sense that um, we speak now these factors like for example friends now the way I'm speaking with my friends is totally different than the way I speak with others now with the strangers again it has another sen sense if the speaker is a man or a woman, again, sex also uh, affects the way we speak. Young people, old people, or equal or unequal status, and many other factors. Now, all of these factors will have an influence on what is said and how also it is said. We would have to describe what the topic of conversation was and even what setting it took place even the, pl the place also influences on the speech event cooperative principle as I said here we have four cooperative principles and these principles uh, 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 were uh, described by Grice 1957 now the first one is regarding the quantity the quantity maxim the idea or the base the quantity maxim make your contribution as informative as is required but not more not less than is required the second principle is regarding equality quality maxim now do not say that which you believe to be false or fit or which you lack uh, adequate evidence the maxim number three is connected with relation the relevant and finally, the manner, the way of um, uh, the spoken English or the spoken language. Now, the manner should be be clear, brief, and be also well organized and in, in order. 
Now, we will talk about hedges. And I want you just to pay attention to the definition of hedges. Now, hedges can be defined as words or phrases used to indicate that you are not really sure that what you are saying is sufficiently correct or complete. When you speak with someone and you are not sure about what you are saying or what you are telling to him. Now, this or these words are called as hedges. For example, now suppose you are talking with someone, a friend, and uh, you use the following words or phrases by saying, uh, well, uh, I'm not sure about, or um, if you could correct me if I'm not wrong, now these words, or as far as I know, now these words are called as hedges. We use the language, but we are not sufficiently uh, aware, or we are not sufficiently sure what we say is correct, or what we say is complete. So these are called as hedges, or sometimes you may say also, I'm not, I'm not sure, but... Now, if you say like this, it means that you are using hedges. What is hedges? Is to use some words, some phrases, which they do not sufficiently uh, complete or you are not sure about what you are saying. Now, the difference between hedges and implicatures. Now, as I said, hedges, not to be sure about or using words or phrases to indicate that what you are saying is not sufficiently correct or complete. But implicatures. Now, what is implicatures? In a very simple way, if someone, for example, asks you, are you coming to the party tonight? Or, uh, how about going to, uh, uh, to the beach tomorrow? Or, how about taking dinner tonight? Now, if your answer is no, so, the, 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 the reply is understood, it's no, but suppose you ask your friend or your brother, now, are you coming to the party tonight? And his reply was, I've got an exam tomorrow. So, he did not mention yes or no. So, the answer is not yes or no, but it was, I've got an exam tomorrow. So, what is the difference between if he says no? So the answer is clear. But if he says, I've got an exam tomorrow, again the answer is no. So this kind of sentence is called as implicature. So it is understood to Carl that Lara doesn't want to go to the, to the party tonight. Why? Okay, she did not say no. I do agree. But her answer was, I've got an exam tomorrow. So, she is not coming. So, this kind of uh, uh, replies or answers, they are called as implicature. Carol asks Lara, are you coming to the party tonight? Now, her answer was, I've got an exam tomorrow. It means sorry or no. But she did not use sorry or no as a direct reply. She said, I've got an exam tomorrow, which means no. The next point about background knowledge or background information about someone. Now, John was on his way to school last Friday. He was really worried about the math lesson. Now, if we, ju if we know John, that he was uh, 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 on his way to school. So, if we have a background information about John, uh, if we have a background knowledge about John, immediately we will know that, if we just read or hear this, John was on his way to school last Friday, we will come to the conclusion that he might be on the bus. And that is acceptable in our culture. Or, he might be going by walking to, to school. And again, this is acceptable in our culture. But if someone, for example, um, uh, uh, says that, okay, he might be going swimming to school. 
Is it accepted? In our culture, it's not, but it's possible. If, if, somebody, if someone else said, for example, that he might go by boat, is it acceptable? Yes, of course, it's acceptable, but in our culture, it's not an acceptable sentence. So the background knowledge can help us to understand the situation. Now, he was really worried about the math lesson. Now, he refers to John, right? And we know that he is a, a teacher, for example. So, we know that he was worried about a uh, math lesson. He might miss the, the, uh, the math lesson. Or, if we know that John is a student, so he was worried about the math lesson, he might uh, be absent for the class or he might be late for the class. So, the background knowledge uh, helps us, or the background information helps us also to understand uh, uh, a discourse, understand a text, to understand a sentence in English. Now, schemas, or I said schemata, or scripts. What is the difference between schemata and script? Now, a schema is a general term for a conventional knowledge structure that exist in memory. Uh, in a very simple way, when I say schema or schemata, uh, let me use the, the word um, uh, image. Now, when I say schema, I mean something in the memory which means image. Now, let me just tell you about a supermarket. Now, suppose uh, I'm talking with someone and I use the word supermarket. For example, I was in the supermarket yesterday. Now, immediately, the image of supermarket comes to the listener's mind or an image comes to the listener's mind that supermarket consists of, for example, shelves, goods, carts, people, different uh, uh, items, and he know or he knows the, the image or schema of the supermarket. Now, when I speak about office, an office, school office, or university office, immediately an image will come to the listener, oh, an office uh, contains, for example, a computer, desk, chair, some uh, uh, books, and uh, a cupboard, and so on. Now, a classroom. Uh, uh, I missed my classroom yesterday. So, what is a classroom? It is an image in our memory. So, it reflects what we have in our memory. The image of a classroom immediately comes to our, in, in, in our mind, or in my mind, that classroom consists of chairs, tables, whiteboard, um, uh, markers, uh, for example, um, uh, a desk, a table, computer, uh, for the teacher to be used by some models, so, this is a classroom. So, schema means an image, something in our memory or something exists in our memory, which is totally different from script. What is a script? A script is a series of action. It is a series of action. An image which is repeated or we have an action as in series. For example, Trying not to be out of the office for long, Susie went to the nearest place, sat down and ordered a sandwich, avocado sandwich. It, it was quite crowded, but the service was fast, so she left a good tip back in the office. Things were not going well. Now, here we have some schemas and we have scripts. Now, what is the schema here? When I say Office, this is a, a schema. Office is a schema. It is not coming here. I don't know why. Okay, so a schema is an image. It will be clear for, for us what is an office. Now, when I say, um, uh, let us say, uh, she went to the nearest place, sat down, and ordered an avocado sandwich. It could be a place, a restaurant, a cafe there. So, again, a, an image comes in our mind. But these series of action, these series of scripts, 
um, uh, going out to the office, went to the nearest place, ordering a sandwich, it was crowded, uh, service was fast, she left by a good tip, back to the office. Now these are script. It is like a film, moving film, an action, a repeated action, something that we uh, remember as a movie. So as I said, it is a repeated action. So uh, similar in this way to a schema is a script. A script is essentially a dynamic, a moving uh, schema. That instead of a set of typical fixed image, so a script has a series of conventional actions that take place in or at different times. So let me just summarize what I said. We talked about uh, discourse analysis and we say that discourse analysis is uh, to, to make sense of what we read and how things are well organized, well constructed and uh, to understand the speakers who communicate more than they say or also um, uh, to be uh, successfully involved in a complex activity called um, uh, conversation and then uh, we distinguish between uh, cohesion and coherence and then after that uh, we talked about the the factors that affect uh, uh, the, the factors that affect and influence the uh, speech events and we talked about the cooperative principles we said that there are four principles then moving to hedges the meaning of hedges we said that we use uh, some words and the phrases to indicate that what we are saying or what we are trying to say is uh, sufficiently incomplete or incorrect by using some specific words like I'm not sure about that or correct me if not I'm mistaken or, or, or as far as I know. And then we move to implicatures and we say that implicatures uh, as in this example are you coming to the party tonight? So the reply was I've got an exam so the, uh, the answer was no but in indirect way and then we talked about the background knowledge uh, uh, helps us to understand more and to uh, interrupt the sentence uh, correctly and finally we talked about the difference between schemas and uh, scripts and we said in a very simple way a schema is an image it exists in our memory and a script is a, a dynamic, a moving schema. It is a kind of um, the actions, a series of actions, conventional actions that take place as a, a film or a movie in, in our mind. Uh, I hope that this lecture, lecture number 10, is uh, clear for all of you. And I hope I uh, made myself very clear. Hope to see you again in uh, lecture number 11. Till then, see you, and I wish you all the best. Thank you.